Cora TV. The world is thinking. When I begin a novel with characters, I always begin with people. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not like a poet, for instance, who doesn't necessarily have any characters in, in, in poetry. A po <clears throat> there may be poets in the room. Poets tend to begin with a sense of form, and they may, maybe hear a rhythm or feel a rhythm without any words. You know, it's a very musical thing. But a novelist and a short story writer, a prose fiction writer, almost always begins with people. So the people are the first. And for me, the setting and the people are always together. And the setting is somehow a part, uh, like a character. I think of the settings of my, my prose fiction as characters, too. And they exude a certain, a certain uh, personality. Well, I guess I just like, I like people very much. I'm very enraptured by people's personalities. I must confess I also like animals. And I think dogs and cats, and I'm sure horses, I don't know horses that well, but that they have personalities too. And they're very distinct, you know, we, we all know our, our, if we have, if you live with animals, you know they have very strong personalities. But how do you capture that? Because the personality of an animal, I've tried to write about animals to some extent, and in my children's books I do have animals who, uh, <laughs> who basically can think and seem like people. But people can express themselves. And so if you allow people, if you're a writer, if you allow your people to talk, they will express themselves in a way that the writer herself might not have thought of. I give an assignment to my students to create a character to have people talking, like talking to one another. And, I, and they say, well, we don't, know, <coughs> we don't know these people. And I said, well, you have to listen. <laughs> and what you write in the first five minutes is just the beginning. If you stay with it for two hours, and really work at it, at the end of those two hours, you'll have something. But you won't know what it is in the beginning. And a, a young writer thinks, well, I can't do that. And, they, and sometimes they want to give up. But uh, a writer who's been writing for quite a while doesn't give up. Like I know the first six weeks of writing a novel for me are like hell. I'm very unhappy and very frustrated and, and actually very miserable. But I keep on going, but I think a lot of new writers, they, you know, facing this first six weeks or so, when nothing seems to be coming together and, and you're so frustrated, you read over what you have and you don't like it, and you keep on reading it over and you don't like it, finally give up. I think a lot of people give up, but the writer who's the seasoned veteran, you know, he's got all these scars and, <laughs> and so forth. The seasoned veteran knows that the terrain is really rough in the beginning, but stays with it. So Rebecca was someone that I imagined very strongly would be a fairly plausible early version of my grandmother, whom I knew in a very different way, because she had to be strong. This is a girl who is not a very feminine person. She had to be strong to survive. And a brother like Herschel had to be strong. He survives also. The father was a person who could have been very, um, <clears throat> very effective and a wonderful father and very cultured person back in the small town near Munich in Germany where he had an identity. He was in a, he was in a residential neighborhood. He had, a, he had a family. He had relatives. He was known. But he was transplanted and thrust across into into this, this new world in a horrible situation. Uh, he gets a radio at, at one point in the novel and he's listening to the war news. That's all he wants to hear about, what's happening back in Germany and what, what the Nazis are doing, what the, what the Allies are doing. He's completely, completely obsessed and he never really, he can't possibly get over it and it comes to a tragic end. But obviously his children don't have that same feeling and, and, they, and they do survive and they move on. The novel actually it has many things in it after the initial trauma. Rebecca becomes Hazel Jones. She makes herself into a very pretty popular girl, sort of like June Allison in the movies, you know, or Doris Day, a really nice, upbeat person who, is a, who will become a wonderful mother. And she's, she's moving toward the grandmother whom I knew, who was such a wonderful person. 
but obviously had made herself that way. She wasn't, na she wasn't naturally that way. She, she, she acquired that personality.